schools with some limited success. He rapidly brought out a book extolling high doses of vitamin C as the way to prevent colds. It was a bestseller and sales of vitamin C soared. Pauling's endorsement created scores of new high-dose vitamin C products, some openly acknowledging his name. Convinced he had discovered a new cure, Pauling awaited the plaudits. I thought the medical profession would be pleased and that they would be no longer bothered by patients with the common cold, for which they didn't have any very good treatment anyway, but could concentrate on more serious illnesses. So I was astonished at the reception that I got. Far from welcoming Pauling's theory, doctors rounded on him. The attack was launched from Harvard by Professor Frederick Stair. Professor Pauling is a great chemist and a great American, but when you come to questions of health, he's not a physician, he's not a nutritionist, and I don't think he really knows much about what he's talking or writing about in the area of nutrition. And at Harvard, among Dr. Stair's projects... In the 1940s, Stair had been part of a movement to put nutrition on a sound scientific basis. The vitamins had only recently been discovered, and doctors wanted to work out exactly how much of each vitamin people actually needed to avoid deficiency diseases. In the case of vitamin C, it was known that a lack of it caused the disease scurvy. So the nutritionist recommended a daily intake of between 30 and 60 milligrams, more than enough to prevent scurvy. Pauling's heresy was to question the whole philosophy behind the recommended daily amounts, which the experts said were all that anyone really needed. It depends upon what you mean by need, that if you are satisfied to stay alive, then for most people the RDA of 60 milligrams a day is uh, enough to achieve that result. But if by need you mean uh, to be in the best of health, then much more is required. The evidence that finally convinced Pauling he was right came from animals. All animals need vitamin C, but most of them get it only indirectly from food. They make it for themselves within the body. But three species can't manufacture their own vitamin C. Guinea pigs, primates, and man. So in zoos, huge amounts of fruits and vegetables are fed to guinea pigs and primates. In fact, Pauling discovered that vets recommend far higher intakes of vitamin C for monkeys than doctors do for people. Extrapolating to humans, Pauling advised taking a minimum of six grams a day, 200 times what's officially recommended. Now Pauling stuck his neck out even further. He started saying that vitamin C might prevent not just colds, but all manner of diseases. As more critics rounded on him, he almost relished the inevitable charge of quackery. The authorities say that if someone tells you that he knows something that would be good for you no matter what's wrong with you, then that shows that he's a quack. He has a nostrum that's valuable against any illness. But I contend that high doses of vitamin C are valuable for people no matter what is wrong with them because they the vitamin C in large amounts bolsters up the body's natural protective mechanisms that have value in protecting against all sorts of diseases and conditions. Pauling's next vitamin C bomb was dropped in medicine's most sacrosanct area, cancer. He wrote a book based on the medical records of cancer patients who'd been given high doses of vitamin C by a Scottish surgeon, Dr. Ewan Cameron. Cameron and Pauling claimed vitamin C both prevented cancer and prolonged the lives of people who'd already got it. Pauling took the data right to the top, to the US government's National Cancer Institute, where he had a meeting with some of the country's leading cancer physicians. He was rebuffed. Their response was that they would not do anything uh, about it. You see, this is a different attitude from the attitude of a scientist. A scientist is always, always looking for 
a hint of something new that might lead to a new discovery. Uh, with physicians, it seems to me, you have to force the new discovery down their throats. After all, I've made uh, a good many discoveries in my life. I've turned out to be right a good fraction of the time, and I'm probably right about vitamin C. Pauling's persistence paid off. The world-famous Mayo Clinic agreed to test vitamin C. Six, five, eight. Whereas in the Mayo Clinic study, it was stopped after 75 days. No mention is made of this basic fact. So it seems to me that this is fraud. Pauling wrote several furious letters to Mertel, who never replied. Finally, he wrote to the editor of the journal that had published the trials, claiming they were a fraud and a conspiracy. Again, he was rebuffed. Professor Pauling, it assumed that the journal and uh, uh, Dr. Mertel and his colleagues were somehow involved in some kind of chicanery uh, for which there wasn't really a persuasive shred of evidence. And so we chose to ignore it. Pauling, despite his name, was able to be written off as a heretical has-been. That's not an unusual phenomenon in science. When great scientists move into areas where they don't have expertise and they assume that the same brilliance and intuition that allowed them to hit the bull's eye in their own field um, will serve them well in a new field and they become impatient with the evidence. The evidence should catch up with them. They're ahead of the evidence. Well, it, it's very hard to run ahead of the evidence in clinical research. And it's very easy, particularly in cancer research, to go astray. 10 years ago, Pauling's vitamin C crusade seemed to have foundered. Partly it was said because of his own intemperate, unscientific campaigning style. In many ways, he was his own worst enemy. I think the fatal mistake, as far as acceptance by the medical community, uh, was were his earlier claims that vitamin C, can, he has said at certain points, that vitamin C will cure as many as 75% uh, of all cancers. Well, people hear something like that, the medical community hears something like that, and they say, well, that's got to be ridiculous, and that's got to be very easy to refute. I think the only truth behind the claim that the Mayo Clinic studies were a conspiracy is that the medical community uniformly rejects what he says. Uh, I, I don't think it's a conspiracy in the sense that uh, they met in hotels in the late evening or something to say, well, what is going to be our next move against Pauling? I just think they find they regard him as a nuisance, and um, they share the same opinion, and uh, they go after him. Better bring, get the vitamin C there, though. But Pauling's faith in vitamin C wasn't shaken. Even when his wife, who like him had been taking huge doses of the stuff, began to fall ill. Victor Herbert. When I first heard Linus Pauling promoting vitamin C against the cold sure. and everything else, I laughed. But then when he and I appeared on radio in New York City and I noticed that his wife had lost a lot of weight and I said to him Linus I think you ought to take your wife to a doctor because she's lost a lot of weight she may have something seriously wrong with her like cancer Linus said no problem Victor I'm giving her mega doses of C she's gonna be fine well she went on and died within two years of cancer and Pauling received a second blow. Soon after his wife's death, his colleague Dr. Cameron, despite vitamin C, also died of cancer. And yet today, alone and 93, Pauling continues his vitamin C crusade, unbowed and undaunted. Once a week, he leaves his remote Pacific Ocean home and is driven nearly 200 miles to his very own research laboratory near San Francisco. A modest enough building, the Linus Pauling Institute is where his vitamin C gospel has been conceived and preached for the last 20 years. 
Linus Polling Institute. It has half a dozen separate laboratories and up to 40 scientific staff, all seeking to discover yet more properties of vitamin C. Morning, Ms. Monroe. Good morning, Dr. Pauling. Pauling's lab has been maintained largely by private benefactors inspired by the cause and the name. Donations average about three million dollars a year. I thank you very much for your fine contribution to the support of our work period. Also, come, uh, I enclosed some of our recent papers on vitamin C and heart disease period. The cure so of heart disease time. is his latest crusade. Assisting him, Dr. Matthias Ruff, a German biochemist who took a huge risk in doing so. My decision to join Linus Pauling was noticed with disfavor from all my peers in Germany. I wouldn't say they put pressure on me, but they said, how can you join that maverick? Why did you do that? You're threatening your own career by doing that. Now, the molecular mass values, they seem to be too small. In Germany, Rath had been researching cholesterol and heart disease and had seen a link with vitamin C. Pauling was one of the few to listen. That we just expose. Pauling and Rath tested the new theory on guinea pigs. To induce cholesterol in their arteries, they were all fed a very high fat diet, but some got high doses of vitamin C as well. Under the microscope, Rath compared the animal's arteries. As expected, the high-fat diet had produced large deposits of cholesterol. But he found less cholesterol in the animals on the extra vitamin C. Rath and Pauling said they discovered the true cause of heart attacks. What we are saying is that heart disease is nothing else than a form of pre-scurvy that can be prevented and treated by a significantly increased amount of vitamin C in the diet. As a result of our experimental work done in the laboratory, I am strongly of the opinion that uh, we can eliminate heart disease as a major cause of premature disability and death by taking the optimum amounts of vitamin C every day. Another staggering claim that seems to run far ahead of the evidence. In the eyes of many, Pauling has finally flipped. I think most of us who have observed what Pauling has done with vitamin C are filled with regret. Uh, we're saddened by the fact that this is a great man who recently is making major claims that are of great importance to the public, but is not willing to play by the rules. My perception, and, and you know, this could easily be wrong, is that Linus is suffering from something called senile megalomania, which some other Nobel Prize winners developed as they got older, where they get an obsessive belief that they can't say anything wrong. If they believe it, it's got to be true. But now, at the very universities that once criticized Pauling, vitamin C is being dusted off the shelf. Some younger research scientists have begun to take another look at the substance that's officially meant only to prevent scurvy. And they've found it has a particular chemical property that might help prevent some diseases. Dr. Bulls Fry. There has been a growing interest in vitamin C over the last decade, uh, mainly because uh, Many degenerative diseases uh, have been found to be associated with um, what's called oxidation. And it is clear that vitamin C can very effectively prevent many of these oxidation processes because it is a very strong antioxidant. Antioxidants are the latest consumer health boom. In America, sales of vitamin C are rising and the public who were once derided for following Pauling are now the object of scientific study. In 
In Los Angeles, a team headed by Dr. James Enstrom has been investigating the vitamin C intake of a large cross-section of Americans. And they found that people who ingest around 10 times more vitamin C than the experts say is all we need have less heart disease and live up to six years longer than people following the official guidelines. And Professor of Nutrition Gladys Block says that in the last decade, over 40 studies show that people with diets rich in vitamin C have a lower risk of cancer. There's just been an explosion of research on vitamin C as well as other antioxidants. And partly attributable, I suspect, to Pauling's advocacy of vitamin C. And there's been a growing recognition among scientists, among epidemiologists, and among nutritionists that antioxidants are important, vitamin C is important in a lot of chronic diseases like cancer, as Pauling had suggested. Now a number of scientific trials are testing the Pauling philosophy and evidence is emerging that high doses of some vitamins, including C, elderly. He's preparing another confrontation with the establishment. His staff are now claiming vitamin C may help in AIDS. It's Pauling's most ambitious bid to save the world and once again take the flack, but he also hopes the credit for being ahead of the game. I think it's going to turn out that uh, the general opinion will be in perhaps pretty quickly, in 10 years or 20 years, the one that the uh, distinguished biologist René Dubose expressed. He said, Dr. Pauling works in the conventional fields of science, but he is 20 years ahead of everybody else. Heretic. Heretic. Heretics are absolutely necessary in science. I think it's no exaggeration to say that virtually all of the major breakthroughs that have occurred in the history of science have occurred through heretics and have started off as heresies. Most of the progress in science requires a willingness to be wrong. Somebody has to risk being ostracized by the scientific community to advance science. And I think that's Pauling's legacy, that he was willing to take that risk. And I think that's very much part of what makes Pauling a very great scientist. Pauling knows that vitamin C won't make him live forever. But he feels that of all his scientific work, it's his heresy that will be most famously immortal. Many scientists will remember me as one of the founders of molecular biology, of course. And chemists in general will remember me as uh, one of the founders of modern chemistry. But also what I'll be remembered for is probably that I uh, am the vitamin C man and uh, as having least in part responsibility for the revolution in medicine in which uh, there was a great improvement in human health and in the control of disease through the use of vitamin C and other vitamins. And this will include my op opponents, although the opponents may have died off by that time. <laughs>